Hey there folks, the Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to present our ultimate visitor guide to Tulum, Mexico. In this video, we'll cover the top things to see and do in the Tulum area, along with details on how to get there, the best times to visit, the best ways to get around, and more. Plus, we'll give you honest feedback on the real Tulum, not just the sexy, beautiful Instagram shots you see on the internet. Okay, let's go. First up, just a bit of background on Tulum. Tulum is a small town located in the Mexican state of Quintana Roo. It's at the southern end of what many people call the Riviera Maya, running north to south along the Caribbean coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. It wasn't that long ago that Tulum was a little known sleepy town with some basic lodging options, most without AC, and visited mostly by backpacker types, if anyone at all. Today though, Tulum has become one of the most trendy places to visit in all of Mexico, boasting tropical beaches, many nearby cenotes, Mayan ruins, and a vibrant, if not somewhat laid back nightlife. It's certainly worth considering a visit here among the many other choices you have nearby, such as Playa del Carmen, Cozumel, Isla Mujeres, and Isla Holbosch. By the way, if you want to do some homework on those, please check out our other top-rated travel guides for each. In this video, we'll concentrate just on Tulum and give you both the good and the bad, so you can make a smart decision on the best choice for you. Finally, one more important point to be aware of about Tulum. It's really two distinct areas. One is a small town, often called El Centro, and the other Tulum is what they call the Hotel Zone or the Beach Road area. These two areas are not close to each other and will take you a one hour walk, a 25 minute bike ride, or a 10 minute taxi or scooter ride to get between them. This is a really important point to remember as you'll have to manage it during your visit and I'll talk more about this later. Now just some quick thoughts on the best times to visit Tulum. All the places along the Riviera Maya have the same weather considerations. The best time to visit is during the winter season from late November into April or May. During this time there's little to no rainfall and the temperatures are the closest to perfect. But the counterpoint is that this is also peak travel season with the most crowds and the highest pricing. The rainy season runs from May into October and during this time you'll encounter higher temperatures and humidity and an occasional afternoon thunderstorm. But this can be a pretty nice time to visit. In fact we actually like coming during this period as there's a lot less people and you can find some good deals. Finally, perhaps the most important thing to consider about timing your visit to Tulum is the increasingly difficult sargasm or seaweed season. It's become a really big deal these days all along the Riviera Maya. So if you're coming to experience pristine beaches, you just might be in for a surprise. Sargasm is a type of seaweed which inundates the waters and beaches here during the warmer months. The season used to be from around April through October, but due to warming ocean waters and increased chemical runoff from commercial farming, it's getting to be a longer season and much worse when it does happen. Just look at some of these pictures to get a feel for what you may encounter. And this was June, not the worst of it. All right, this is just one night. I clean this up every day. And this is the sargazzo or seaweed that's rolled up. You can see the nice blue water turn into brown from all this sargasm. Some hotels and towns have teams working day and night trying to keep their particular piece of beach clean. So best to check with your individual hotel on the situation and how they deal with it. Now, let's talk about how to get to Tulum and how best to get around once you're there. 
most folks visiting Tulum will be coming from the Cancun airport or some other location further north. From the Cancun airport and Cancun itself, it's about a two-hour drive south to Tulum. And from the popular Playa del Carmen area, it's about a one-hour drive. Either way, there is one primary north-south road running along the Riviera Maya, and Tulum is at the bottom end with nothing much beyond it until you get close to Belize. There are three primary ways to get to Tulum. The cheapest option is the ADO bus. And don't think trashy, beat up, old, open air bus when you think ADO. These buses are newer, really nice, fully AC'd, and very smooth and comfortable. We actually prefer this option to all others, unless you really, really need to rent a car. The buses leave every hour and a half or two from the airport in Cancun and every 20 minutes or so from Playa del Carmen. And the cost from the Cancun area is 400 pesos a person or about $22 US. And from Playa del Carmen, 114 pesos or about six bucks. You can easily book a seat once you arrive or you can book and reserve a seat in advance through their website or phone app. The primary downside to the ADO bus is that it only stops at one central location in Tulum Town. So, you'll likely have to take a short taxi ride to your hotel once you arrive. The next best option to get to Tulum is a shared ride van or a private shuttle. You can find many choices on sites like Viator or TripAdvisor or simply ask your hotel to assist with a booking. The cost varies widely, but you can estimate about $35 a person for a shared van or $80 to $140 for a private shuttle. For larger groups of four or more, this may likely be your cheapest and easiest option. And by the way, for those that are curious, there are no Uber and Lyft in the Cancun area due to the very strong local taxi unions. Finally, one can always rent a car. This will be your most expensive and complicated option, but if you expect to drive yourself to a lot of attractions, this could still be a good choice. Otherwise, honestly, we recommend skipping a rental car. It might look cheap at first glance as Mexico rates tend to seem low, but remember third-party insurance is not included in the rate, but is mandatory. So you'll have to add another $25 to $40 a day. Now, once you've made it to Tulum, how best to get around? Well, remember earlier that I said there are really two Tulums? The El Centro town area and the Beach Road area, which are about six kilometers or four miles apart. Given this distance, your best option is typically to rent a bicycle or a scooter or take taxis everywhere. Bicycle rentals are plentiful and you'll see many options everywhere so I won't mention any specific one, but the only important point is to make sure to rent a bike in decent shape and one with a basket. And the cost should be about 200 pesos per day or about 10 to 12 bucks. Your hotel might even offer free bikes, so be sure to check on that when you book your hotel. Next up, if you're comfortable driving a scooter on dirt roads and with traffic, then you might want to give this option a go. A scooter will set you back around 30 to 40 US dollars a day. And if you've watched many of our videos, you'll already know we love renting scooters to get around. And this was a great option for us here in Tulum as well. If you don't want to be bothered with having to rent and return a bike or a scooter, then there's always the local taxis. And note, there is no Uber and Lyft in Tulum. But taxis are everywhere. And from the main town to the Tulum Beach Road area, the price is set at 150 pesos, depending a little bit on your final destination. But our pro tip here is to try to find a taxi by itself away from one of the group taxi stands. In this case, you can haggle a little bit, but whatever you do, always settle on a price before getting in. Finally, just a quick point on the local Colectivo buses. We really like to take these when we're in Mexico as they're a lot of fun and a great way to immerse yourself. 
<laughs> but in the case of Tulum, the local taxi union really makes it difficult for gringos to use them. So, unless you speak fluent Spanish and look like a local, you're probably going to be out of luck with using these in Tulum. Now, let's touch briefly on where to stay. I won't give you specific options here, but instead, I'll simply give you the two big decisions you'll have to make. Number one, there are those two areas you'll have to decide between, either the El Centro main town area or the beach road area. The beach road area has some really nice and expensive options, and of course, you will be on or at least very near a beach. While the Tulum El Centro area has more affordable options and a more real Mexico feel. The second decision you'll have to make is the level of quality you want. There are some cheaper yet nice options in both areas, but if you want world-class resort type accommodations, then the only option is the beach road area. Having said that, we actually prefer the El Centro town area as there are also quite nice options here as well as you have a lot more dining and nightlife options in close proximity. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's finally get to the top things to see and do in and around Tulum. But just a quick shout out here first that if you're enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up, maybe a comment too, or better yet, forward this to one of your friends. And please consider subscribing to our channel to receive more fun, informative travel videos just like this one. Of course, the number one thing to do in Tulum is to hit the beach. I suppose it's no surprise, but there are a number of beautiful beaches up and down the coast here where you can swim, walk the beach, experience an incredible sunrise, do some snorkeling, or just chill out at one of the many beach clubs. Accounting for that seaweed issue I mentioned earlier, there are some really beautiful beaches here. However, another negative point to Tulum is that most of them are designated as private beaches, which typically means you'll have to pay to park and or purchase a minimum amount of food and beverages. Most people don't tell you this, but it is important to know and understand. Anyways, it's not a huge deal, as most are willing to pay a little bit for some food and beverage while on the beach. I'm not going to cover all the individual beaches here, but it's probably useful to group them into two zones, the North Zone and the South Zone. The North Zone beaches are the ones inside the Tulum National Park area. This is the same area where the Tulum Mayan ruins are, and these are probably the nicer beaches. The difference between this area and the South Zone is that you will need to purchase a 58 peso wristband to access it. This is where you're going to have to pay, I think it's 58 pesos to enter into the park. And they give you a wristband to make sure you pay for that. In this area, the primary beaches are Playa Santa Fe, Playa Pescadores, Playa Pariso, and Playa La Palmas. And our pro tip here is the best snorkeling in all of Tulum is directly off of Playa Pescadores Beach. And it's easy to do on your own by simply going to the beach and making a deal with one of the multiple boats who take tourists out every 15 to 20 minutes. And the rate should cost you only about 350 to 400 pesos or about 20 bucks a person. South of this area, you'll exit the nature park and come to the primary hotel zone running for more than five kilometers or three miles more. The road runs behind a series of beach resorts and clubs most of the way, but there is one beach called Mirador Beach, which is a popular place for locals and for watching the sunrise, and you'll drive directly by that on the road. Beyond that, if you've heard of a famous or exotic beach resort, it's very likely in this area. So a fun thing to do is to simply ride a bike or a scooter and stop at the various cool places along the way. And if you find something you really like, simply stop and buy a drink and take in the views. 
The second most popular thing to do after the beaches is to visit the Tulum Mayan archaeological site. It's a small but beautiful Mayan site overlooking the ocean and it's at the north end of that Tulum nature park I mentioned earlier. It's another 90 pesos to enter the site but it's quite famous and the third most visited Mayan site in the Yucatan. At one time this site was a key port for the Mayan society in the area and it was actually inhabited all the way up until the Spanish discoveries in the 16th century when it was finally abandoned. It's possible to visit the ruins on your own however we recommend hiring one of the guides that tend to hang out around the entrance as you'll learn much more about the history that way. And our pro tip here is to visit this site as early as possible as it's really open exposure and it gets really hot and it gets more crowded as the day goes on. Another worthy historical site nearby is the Cyan Ka'an Biosphere. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site located just south of Tulum that's home to over 300 species of birds, 120 kilometers of coastline, coral reefs, a cool lagoon, and more than 20 Mayan archaeological sites. It's also possible to see dolphins, turtles, flamingos, and manatees on some of the various excursions you can take here. At a minimum, we'd recommend trying to visit the Mual ruins along with walking the nearby boardwalk through the mangroves to a cool observation tower, then taking the short boat plus float ride on the lagoon and through an ancient Mayan canal. Finally, there are tons and tons of cenote and underground river options to experience close by. And, fun fact, there are more than 1,000 cenotes in the area. But for brevity, I'll mention just two ideas here, but no, there are many, many more. The Grand Cenote is one of the closest cenotes to Tulum. It's a short 10-minute taxi ride or 25-minute bike ride from the center of town, and it's open seven days a week from 8 until 4.45. If you want to step it up a bit from the normal cenotes all over the area, then consider the underground river experience of Rio Secreto. It's one of the best overall experiences we've done in the entire Riviera Maya area, and we'd highly recommend it. If you want to learn more about that, check out our dedicated review. Just search Rio Secreto Scottsdale Chick. I have more cool sites for you to consider, but unlike the other options I've already mentioned, these next ones will all require a long full day effort. First up has to be two of the top Mayan sites in all of the Yucatan, Chichen Itza and Coba. Chichen Itza was voted one of the seven wonders of the world in 2007, and it's a great place to visit and very impressive. But be warned, it's also a long, hot day trip. I suppose you have to do it as it's famous, but our actual preference is to visit Coba. These ruins are notably closer to Tulum, are less crowded, have a lot of shade, and tour groups tend to offer a couple of fun cenotes to visit nearby as well. <laughs> Another bonus is you can actually do this trip by yourself, either by driving or taking one of those comfortable ADO buses, then just hiring a guide at the entrance when you arrive. Next up, in terms of great day trips, is the nearby island of Cozumel. It's a short 45-minute ferry from the nearby Playa del Carmen and definitely worth a day trip if you've never been. The best scuba and snorkeling in the area can be found here and it's also really fun to rent a scooter or a jeep and do a day trip drive around the island. Check out our dedicated video on this if you're interested. Just search Cozumel Scooter Tour. If you've already been to Cozumel, then another idea to consider is Isla Mujeres. It's a bit further away, but also a bit more exotic and off the radar screen. We actually believe it's worth staying a night or two on this island, 
But if you only have one day, you can also do Isla Mujeres as a day trip, as there are many package tours headed there. If you want to learn more about Isla Mujeres and all it has to offer, check out our top-rated guide on that. Just search Isla Mujeres Travel Guide. If Cozumel and Isla Mujeres don't float your boat and you really want a long day, then maybe consider Bacala Lagoon to the south. It used to be very little known, but it's certainly becoming more trendy and popular now as it's very Instagram friendly. Finally, there are two very popular, I'll call them water slash nature parks to consider. They're very well known and very commercialized setups, but they're also particularly great options if you have kids or a big family. They're called Ishkaret and Shelha. Neither are cheap and I won't go into their details, but let's just say we have done Shell Hall with our son many years ago and it's worth it. Check out their websites for more information if you want to learn more. Finally, our last section here is just a bit on Tulum's dining and nightlife scene. While the nightlife here is not as renowned or wild as party hot spots further north in Playa del Carmen and Cancun, Tulum does offer some great dining and some hip and trendy options to drink and dance the night away. First up, just a few pointers. Try to bring cash, preferably in pesos, but US dollars will also work if you want a crappy exchange rate. Some of the more local places just don't take credit cards. Second, you'll find most of the Tulum nightlife is located in the main town and then a bit more around the middle of the beach road area. The places in town are generally cheaper and have more live music, while the beach areas have more DJs on the weekends. In the El Centro area, there are some popular places along the north end of the main road, as well as the Calais Centauro zone. Our best recommendation is to just wander around these two areas and find something you like either for dinner or drink some music afterwards. For the beach road area, Casa Jaguar, Gitano, Papaya Playa Project, and Kinto, more for happy hour, seem to be the most popular places these days, but things change frequently. But two old standbys for local bars in the beach road are still Mateo's Mexican Grill and Puro Corazon next door. Finally, coming back to the El Centro area, I'll offer up three local cheap eats places. For us, there's nothing better than eating where the locals eat when we travel around, so we try to seek these cheap eats places out. First up is Charlie's. It's right on the main road, but has a cool patio in the back as well. Here, they have a special type of marinated al pastor, which we thought were the best tacos in Tulum. Check them out and tell us what you think. Two other local taqueria options to consider are Antojitos and El Tio. Both of these are also on the main street and El Tojitos seems to be the one that's more frequented by tourists. Nonetheless, it's not fancy and has a reputation for great tacos and cheap eats. Finally, El Tejillo taqueria is more local and more cheap and probably you won't see any tourists there. It's nothing special, but that's the way we like it. But they do have a nice patio hidden in the back off the road. Well, there you have it, folks. Our ultimate visitor guide to Tulum, Mexico. We hope you enjoyed. Did we miss any of your favorites? Or do you have a secret tip you'd like to share with others? If so, please let us know in the comments section below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more fun, informative travel videos just like this one. Until next time, see you later.